And hello everyone, welcome back to the second part of this series of video tutorials on how to use OpenJSCAD to model a keyboard glove. So we'll pick up where we left off last time. So as you can see here, I copied what we actually had done last time. So just the key function, which allows you to create this placeholder for keys in the future keyboard. So um, I'm going to run you through some various things on how I think is a good way of modeling things in a parametric way with OpenJSCAD and any code based, uh, basically, CAD. So the good thing is always to take first look at your references if you have any. So as you can see, the glove has a few main components that would be a uh, trackball here, the sort of uh, palm rests part. There's also the part where you can attach the straps with these two parts. And <clears throat> then there's the whole area or areas with keys. So we're gonna try to start modeling a few of these. So the simplest thing I think would be just starting with the uh, trackball because, well, it's just a ball for now and then we're gonna move on to the other features so let's first create another function which we'll call, call trackball and for now let's not add any parameters let's keep it simple so we're gonna hard code these values and we're just gonna return a sphere so as you can see here we still have the results the lists of basically sub shapes that we're drawing that we created last time so we're gonna add our trackball we're gonna create one version of it and as you can see here we have the ball now uh, I looked up a few of these online and it should be around 250 or well, 500 millimeter diameter also based on the drawing so <coughs> let's make sure that we have the correct size here i need to make sure that's actually yeah this is perhaps a bit exaggerated uh, so let's make it a tad smaller 2.5 perhaps so that would be 2.5 millimeters. so i need to update the scale of these things so to, in order to do that, let's first have the keys have a more standard size. So they're usually, at least on my laptop, around 10 by 10. So as you can see, it's now updated and the scale makes now a bit more sense. So let's update this to actually be 25 millimeter diameter. And what we're going to do straight away is translate this a bit out of the way always remember x y z so we're gonna move it a bit back along the x-axis also a bit back along the y-axis and we're gonna keep it at the same level vertically so on the z-axis so let's see what it does so there it's a bit out of the way <coughs> so there we have the basics of our trackball of course we're gonna be placing it in a more precise manner in the future and to that but let's not worry about that for now so uh, then we can move on to having more than just a few random keys so what we need is basically creating a keyboard because that's what it is so let's create a function called keyboard and what that is going to do is return a list of shapes which are keys so for now, uh, in this episode at least, I'm gonna just hard code values. So let's do this, I don't know, let's have 15 keys for now. And that will be number of keys. It's a good idea to, to always start with hard coded values and not mess with the parametric aspect. So we just focus on one issue at a time, otherwise it really gets complicated way too fast. So what we are gonna do is use some uh, ES6, so more recent JavaScript things like using this. So we're gonna create an array of size num keys, and it's usually a good idea to fill it with something. 
for now this is basically going to be fake data obviously because this is just a zero uh, in the future it's always good to uh, generate and or store data that you want to manipulate in the form of a JSON object or similar simple like arrays of um, data that you map onto shapes so what we're going to do here is just return for each of these keys we're just going to generate a key by calling that function of course don't forget to return it and you'll see it's not gonna do much because we're not calling it yes so we'll always think about calling your function when you change thing and we're just gonna comment out what we did previously so this is actually doing a bit of a bug because we're actually not returning the things correctly uh, so take a look here we're returning an array and this is an array already so this is an array of an array so it's always a good idea to use little helper functions like some basic array manipulation so head flatten and something like that they're very practical when dealing with functional programming like this so what we're going to do is flatten our outputs and of course we need to import that and that's going to come from you guessed it the arrays module and there you go so right now you actually have 15 keys at the same well occupying the same space here so what we're going to do is of course move them around a bit so the easiest way is really just well do mapping and we're going to apply translate let's move them by something based on the index so here we have the theoretical key data and then your index so we're going to move it by index times 10 and we're not going to move them around on the other axis and then you, we should have a set of spaced out keys of course i forgot to return it and it should update now <coughs> there you go we have quite a few keys a bit messy but it's still there there you can see all of them so what we're gonna do is for convenience just cancel the rotation that we set up last week as a test so that all gonna lay flat of course since we translate by 10 millimeters and they're all of size 10 millimeters we're gonna not see much spacing so let's increase that a bit you can see always iterate piece by piece and do it like that so there we have something that looks sort of like a row of keys you can see so here for example it's a good idea to uh, organize that a bit so imagine we want to do multiple rows of this so why don't we just simply wrap this inside a function so key rows would be a good idea i think and again not making anything parametric for now just wrapping things up in a way that's halfway reusable because we're gonna need a lot of keys and this should just return key rows which is a function there no change that's kind of expected so um what we could do right now just for fun as well and also to introduce some other functions is we could color our trackball and our little keys to match that on the design so that is very simple you just use the color function and you define the R, so red, green, blue, and alpha values, alpha being transparency. And there you're gonna end up with a very pretty red trackball. We can also apply this to the others. As always, very easy, you just do this, copy and paste, and then you can do that for other objects as well. So, Fun aside, <coughs> so 
what we can do is now create other rows. So why don't we just define how many rows we want of this? So num rows would seem like a nice name. Uh, let's do just a few for now. And we're gonna use the same trick that we use here. So we're gonna do return array of size num rows. We're gonna fill that with some dummy data. Again, always remember that these are just stands in, stand in, sorry, for now. So this is row data and then index. This is always useful to have. And again, always simply, we're gonna map things. So as you can already guess, it's just gonna be two rows at the same space. As you can see, it's starting to be a bit less reactive because we're doing boolean operations so cutting away the holes for each keys and that's not very efficient so what we can do is just reduce the quality of the spheres by setting the not very instinctive but fn which means sort of something like resolution or segments and we're going to set that to 12 so that's going to reduce the quality of the hole here but it makes it way faster. So we have a single row or rather we have two rows, but at the same space. So what we're going to do here as well is just translate it by, I don't know, let's make it 20 this time. And we can do that on the other axis, obviously not X, otherwise it would be side by side. And there you go, we're gonna end up with something like this. Oh, wait, it seems that I forgot to use the index. Yes, that happens. It's usually always a good idea since this is being built incrementally to check what you just did and go back. Even if you know what you're doing, mistakes do happen. So this is getting a bit too much keys to get a better overview, I'm going to reduce that. So there, we have a set of keys and a tribal. So looking back at this and trying to analyze the various shapes that our design is made of. As we said earlier, there's the whole wrist part and there's mainly the keyboard part. Obviously you want to be able to attach the keys to something so a good idea would be to have basically blocks to put these keys into, right? So what we can do, so for each row, for example, is, <coughs> sorry, to create a block, which is just gonna be a cube. So this is row. So why don't we actually return something that's combining. So these are the keys and we're gonna combine them by using a union Boolean operation. Keys, don't forget this is, keys is an array. So you want to unpack that otherwise it's a nested array with just a cube and let's make it rather large. So we make it uh, 100 by 10 by 5 and we have sort of a start of that of course it's not placed the best way so you can for example use the centering parameter to well actually center these so they're going to be centered on all three axes if you just use a single boolean so what can we do? We can offset the keys so that they're in the same spot as the blocks they're gonna be slotted onto. In order to do that, well, we already have a translation, so it's kind of easy to just offset it by minus, sorry, minus 50, for example, Oh, no, sorry, in, in the other direction. So minus 50. There. 
and of course this is not fully parametric yet by any means so you would actually normally compute the block size based on the keys and not the other way around but this is just for convenience and we're just going to move the keys a bit up again we're just roughing out the design so we don't need to go into details we're just going to make also these blocks a bit bigger and one important to think about is so this is 115 50 sorry millimeters so this is around 15 centimeters so i don't know about your hand but that seems quite large so 10 centimeters did seem a bit better and this is also something to go back and forth about for your original design so here we have six keys per row which seems a bit more realistic than the excessive amounts we have now so always go back and iterate 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 and update things it doesn't take that much time and it's very simple uh, let's change that a bit to again hard-coded values we're gonna get through an actual parametric uh, thing a bit down the line but let's just keep it with that just play around with it and you get a better feeling of it so there we have two rows of keys we can also perhaps move the trackball around some more to the side uh, because this is centered so you can also make sure that things are centered by forcing that spheres are centered by default but well sensible defaults and all that so let's move it a bit more out of the way and also a bit back there so we can also start adding the number of rows that we want so one two three four five six also very important to notice that you would ideally want curvature so that the keys are not spaced on a line but on a curve we'll also get to that at another point because right now we are just hard coding things then we'll be switching to parametric like actually feeding parameters to be able to specify the placements of the keys and then once you have some basic parametric thing going you can always change how you space or place the keys so so one two three four five and i would say that these are perhaps a bit special because you want them facing outwards here it's quite obvious that they are really on the outer edge and these are also special cases so we'll just handle them separately so let's make it five so um, what we can do now is i think perhaps block out some of the other parts namely this back block so to speak so again we're doing a sort of basic geometrical approximations of this shape so i would think that perhaps combining and this is based mostly on this view combining basically a circle with a square part would mostly fit our needs so we can actually start to do that and so we can make it i think part of a trackball or well you know basically functions in this case are free so let's call it palm rest and this is gonna be another part another function so this time we're gonna see something a bit different so for now we only see us all 3d shapes and functions but you can also do 2d and sort of combine the two and we'll get to that in a second so here as you can see i have 3d primitives so let's also import circle from primitives of course it doesn't autocomplete because otherwise how would i be having fun right 
So primitives 2D. And so bomb rest is just going to be a circle for now. And you'll see it's a bit of a different thing. So it's not obvious to see usually when you have overlapping things. So again, the easiest way is just to comment it out. And there you go. Um, by the way, the zoom, the 3D zoom tries to automatically zoom into the bounding box of all the objects that are in the view. So this is a circle. As you can see, it's drawn differently from the rest of the 3D geometry, obviously because it's just a circle. So what we can do is also do unions and various uh, Boolean operations between well, 2D geometries. So what we actually want is, I think it's square. I always confuse it. Always some issues with the naming conventions in OpenJSCAD v1 that are going away. I don't know if it's square or oh yes, it's actually square. So as you can see, there is now a cube and a sphere blended together in a way. So we actually are going to center these because otherwise it's going to get really hard to get an overview of their placement. So there, now the square or actually rectangle to be more precise is inside the circle so you can't see it so i'm gonna offset it by a bit and then you'll see exactly what i'm shooting for so <clears throat> for now i'm gonna lay out these flat shapes and then we can do some interesting things later by turning them into 3d uh, so let's move it along the y-axis so let's move it by 10 Oh, that's excessive and look like that there you can see shape sticking out and of course we need to set an accurate size since we are doing palm rest that are supposed to incorporate the trackball and we had a radius of 25 so i'm gonna go for 25 here as well for now and this needs to be also 25 sorry about that a bit of change oh yes of course we now need to offset this by at least the radius so to double check this as well because again coherency of naming ah yes so it was that it was correct so obviously the radius is 25 so i need to double think this it's actually 50 by 50 if you want it there as you can see now we have the overall shape and we're going to be able to place the treble here. But wait, didn't you say this is 2D? Yes, indeed. So what we're going to do, we're going to define this as the basic shape for the palm rest. So we're going to name it base shape and that's going to be just this union of things. And what we're going to do is I'm going to return a linear extrusion of the base shape with a height of I think around 10 should be okay and of course I'm gonna need to import linear extrude which is another thing and so we're gonna add this we're gonna import this and voila as you can see it turned into a 3d shape so now we can add back at least the tribal to see where we are. So yes, of course, since that is in a different place, 
we need to also either translate well move around the palm rest or the trackball we can just try to reset the transforms of that one for now to see where it stands there as you can see it would be quite a nice fit uh, i think we can go a bit higher than that there again age versus height so this looks sort of nice does it fit in yes it would of course then we're gonna add some other shape and combine them together to make it more interesting but that's gonna be the basics so what i propose is that this should actually be the whole length of the glove so what we're gonna do is extrude that significantly more because 10 millimeter is not really gonna cut it so around 100 should do it and of course it's extruding upward because it's starting from zero and going up and i think for now that's not really a bothersome what we can do of course wait it's always a relative thing so either we can move the sphere of the trackball or the other part it's usually a very good idea to settle once and for all what your reference part or reference points are so in this case since this is the bulk of the structure it's easier just to pick the palm rests part as being the start of it right so let's see where the keyboard parts are because yes, even if you're used to it, you can get confused real fast. So this is not exactly the placement we wanted, right? So what we're gonna do <coughs> is start moving all that into a better position. So we're just gonna rotate the palm rests because that is the one that's bothering us so yeah basically having the the whole shape be lying down just like it is in the picture i think is the easiest thing because that's how you would imagine a physical object laying on the table and that's something that tends to help so for now a zero so what we want is to rotate along the x-axis So yeah, that's good. So it's laying down like this. Let's also rotate it perhaps along the Z axis so that it faces the other way. There you go. And we can also translate it a bit to have it centered, although that's not essential at this stage, but I think it's gonna help us visualize things better. So why not, it's not a big operation so there you go and we're gonna move it there and that's uh, actually a closer approximation of what we're looking for and let's move it up by a bit so I think that would be an accurate thing there so now everything is resting on zero, as you can see they're aligned, and we have the beginning of palm rest. You don't see me in front of my screen trying to grab that, of course, but I think it's a good start to have that shape, and we could even reuse the 2D shape to sort of flow all the things together into one. But we'll get to that, I think, in another session. So what could we still do with this one? Yeah, I think uh, it's a good start. And as you can see, it's still only not even a hundred lines of code. And if you made it parametric, you could really, well, have all these uh, change based on only a few parameters. And be almost nothing would change. So <clears throat> it's still uh, quite simple and still relatively easy to follow along. We're soon going to have to extract some of these into separate modules to have nice clean code to work with. 
but I think for now at least the basics are there. Uh, one thing that is bothering me is the keys that are sort of melted into the blocks that are holding them so we're gonna just change that before we finish so it's in the keys so let's move them up a bit i think on the surface and there you have the key emplacements for now we're gonna finish the session and i'll see you soon thank you for watching bye